And if you're not doing anything to steer them back to what's accurate and what's right, um, they're going to do the story that they started out with. But if you have your key messages and you have your background information and your other contacts that they can go to, you're actually helping the reporter do their job. And they'll appreciate that and you'll have a lot more control and you'll see a lot less <coughs> of those kind of uh, you know, errors and mistakes in the way uh, report <coughs> excuse me, reporting is done. Let's grab some water here. Is this one safe? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so you increase the understanding, you increase awareness. All along your goal is to change people's behavior. Uh, it's not going to happen with one uh, message, but two, three, four, five, six, ten, twelve, fifteen times. It might take six years, uh, but you can change people's uh, behavior. Build your own credibility. You also influence key audiences. How many of you in here are involved with the legislative or the regulatory process in your areas? <clears throat> Wouldn't you love to be considered the expert in your field by the, the legislature and that they would call you and they say, hey, we're thinking about doing this or we're thinking about changing this regulation? Um, if you're not out there talking about it, they have no way of knowing that you have the expertise. Now, they may go out <clears throat> and, and discover that you're the expert, um, but it's a whole lot easier if you're already established and if people call and they say, no, you need to talk to Frank. He's the, he's the expert on this. Uh, you need to talk to Chuck. He's, he's the expert. So you know, build that credibility to influence those key audiences and then motivate the audience to take action. So public relations can't do a lot of things. It can't change things overnight. As much as we'd like to believe that we can put a story out there, um, that we can you know, do press releases and, and over and over and over and change things immediately, that's not going to happen. Again, the example in California, um, it took six years to change the opinions of 15% of the population, and it's a really good program. Um, at Harley Davidson, we didn't turn. The company didn't turn around overnight. Um, there were a couple of years there where people thought that it was still going to go bankrupt. Um, and that was only 17 years ago. 17 years ago. That's a long time. It's taken a long time to convince people that you know this company is serious, that this motorcycle product is serious. Uh, so don't expect things to, uh, to to happen overnight. It's not going to eliminate your competition, and I'm not sure that competition is really the right term uh, for, for this group because really you all have the same goals and objectives uh, at the end of the day. Um, you know, so you know, it doesn't so much eliminate competition as maybe help eliminate confusion. Um, it can't eliminate other opinions because there are going to be all kinds of opinions, again, with what you all do. Uh, does, does, does everybody in the room agree that 10-10-10 uh, you know, should be applied four times a year? No. Maybe one person does, though. Um, and you just don't know what those other opinions are going to be. So you know, public relations can't just change those opinions. It can influence them though over time. And then it can't compensate for bad decisions, unethical or corrupt practices, or weak marketing decisions. You know, it kind of just gets down to the basics is never lie to the media. Uh, always be transparent. We heard that this morning. That's critical. Um, the story may not always be exactly as you want it, um, but as long as you're truthful with it, you'll, you'll build credibility and trust and you'll have an opportunity to come back. So the, I'm just going to go through these real quickly. The tools of the trade, you know, we all know about the press release, the media alert, uh, the press conference. Um, press conferences especially are often overused. I'm always amazed at the, at the university where they want us to do a press conference every time somebody donates, you know, a million dollars. Um, I say, no, you know, we, for 30 million we'll do a press conference, but for a million, uh, because, you know, it, not that it happens that often, but literally, you'd have to do it, you know, four, five, six, seven times a year. 30 million, you only do a couple of times. Uh, and it has more impact, so it doesn't lose the credibility. 
Um, one of the things that we've found to be very, very effective are what we call white papers. You guys create a lot of that stuff already in your day-to-day -day life. But if you can take a more detailed scientific survey or study and have somebody help you boil it down to um, something that the newspaper reporter can understand, uh, maybe just three or four pages, uh, you can take that in and it can often become the basis for an editorial or an op-ed, opposite editorial page feature with your messages uh, reaching out to, to the market. Uh, brochures, newsletters, and printed material, everybody's doing that. Um, one thing I've got to tell you though is I pulled up probably 35 different publications in, in before I came to this uh, session and the messages in all 35 of them are sort of similar. Sort of similar. But there's enough difference that it did create some confusion in my mind. Um, and I know it must do the same thing you know, in, in the public's mind if they're getting more than one publication. So again, this opportunity to get everybody together uh, and talk about messages and talk about issues and kind of you know, get on the same boat, so to speak, um, you know, is very important because you need to talk with one voice um, to be effective with your public relations uh, effort. So the um, you know, special events, things like that, grassroots. Um, grassroots is kind of a combination of all of it. And grassroots, in many cases, is what they did in California by starting at the smaller um, you know, hardware stores and lawn and garden stores. They went to the grassroots to build up to the grass tops. And that can be a very effective uh, tool of public relations. And then finally, the Web 2.0 um, and social networking opportunities out there um, you know, are just phenomenal and growing faster and faster every day. Now, they do reach a younger audience, and, but they also reach a more educated audience and a little bit more affluent audience. And those are the people that, in my perception, would be more likely to be willing to spend the time and take the consideration, uh, you know, to do a good job managing uh, their lawns, managing their pesticide use. But you start with them, and you know, use that approach to build your grassroots. It can be a very powerful uh, tool. And they have things like you know, YouTube. Everybody, does everybody know what YouTube is and has seen YouTube? A lot of the stuff on YouTube is goofy and totally useless. Um, it's fun. I mean, I like to spend a, you know, 10 minutes a day surfing around to see what's going on. I'm mainly to see that my kids haven't done anything they shouldn't be doing. Uh, <laughs> same thing for Facebook and MySpace. But, but a lot more people every day, um, you know, using these social networking tools that are available on the computer. So what's to prevent you from taking some of the videos that you've produced and some of the other literature uh, and posting it? Uh, again, it's just another opportunity to reach out um, to people. Does anybody in here do a blog? A blog's basically, you know, just an online uh, diary. Um, it takes a real commitment, but if, I mean, these are some of the best minds in the business here, and nobody's doing a blog on, <laughs> so when the journalist sits down to do a story, what they usually do is, you know, they'll go to the sources that they know, but many times they don't know somebody, and they'll go to a website called technorati.com. So it's technorati.com. And Technorati monitors all the blogs, well, maybe not all the blogs, but tens of millions of blogs for information. And if you go to Technorati and type in um, integrated pest management, I'd be curious to see what would come up. Um, if anybody is doing a blog, it'll pop up and sources will pop up. But none of you guys are out there. Could you spell that? It's T-E-C-H-N-O-R-A-T-I, uh, technorati.com. Um, it's just a search engine, but in, you know, when you Google to you know, get general information off the web, Google does not go out and capture blog information. Uh, Technorati is kind of the Google of blogs. Well, but your audience has to read blogs. True. I work for Greenhouse Nursery Industry. Those guys do not have time. 
I mean, I've discovered if they don't get it in a paper 